we also acknowledge during the product development process that you know, it is very much about how these products circulate through the different business models. It's about how we design for that intended use and how we want them to be used. Could you tell us a bit more about ASOS' journey on the circular economy so far? Of course. So we, we have been through our own kind of special journey as well. And we started uh, back in 2018 as part of our global fashion agenda commitments to circularity. Um, and we partnered with the Centre of Sustainable Fashion at London College of Fashion, who have really been our kind of um, knowledge exchange on, on this uh, journey that we've been on so that we've been leaning on them for that kind of expert advice, the support, um, but also a great way to kind of bounce ideas off each other. Your motto at Mad Jeans is doing jeans differently. So what are the main differences between your production, between Mad Jeans production chain and business model and let's say opposed, as opposed to our other uh, ways of producing jeans? Sure. Mad Jeans, the main difference is that we're a circular denim company. And what that means is that we incorporate circularity across our business. Simply put, we actually take our old jeans, recycle them, and reincorporate them back into production. Um, we have a very short supply chain, and with our Lisa Jeans model, we encourage our customers to send back their jeans once they're done using it. When the jeans come back to us, we recycle it, and as I mentioned, reincorporate it back into production. So we're able to keep our raw material in a circular use. Uh, 15 of our designers, we um, took them through a kind of in-depth process with lots of um, engagement, with lots of webinars and seminars, and also lots of different kind of workshops so that they really got to understand uh, what circularity meant for them. Uh, our journey has evolved a little bit since then. So um, you'll hopefully have seen that we launched our circular collection in 2020, which was very much a um, proof of concept and us piloting what our circular design strategy that we'd started to develop in that um, first design pilot could be, what that would look like for our customer, what it would look like at scale, um, and how we could kind of bring that through to fruition. Uh, since then, we were acknowledged that actually there are more people involved in this process internally rather than just the designers. So our product development team is made up of um, buyers, designers, merchandisers, garment technologists. We have a big studio team. We, of course, have our suppliers and our whole supply chain that are involved in this process too. Um, so whilst we're developing the collection, we wanted to make sure that we were capturing all of that detail as well to put it back into training. Over 2020, we've been putting that back into action with our products. Um, and also we realized that we had this big wealth of learnings internally that we wanted to share as well. We're very much um, wanting to be collaborative within our journey, uh, which is why we published our circular design guidebook uh, earlier this month. And I know that um, you can also um, lease some of these jeans, right? Could you tell us a bit more about that and that part of the business model? Absolutely. So the concept of leasing is uh, something that, well, is what Mudjeans is actually famous for. And the idea behind it is to challenge the idea of ownership and give our customers the opportunity to still own something new, but not having the environmental anxiety of owning a new product. The way it works is that our customers can lease a pair of jeans for 12 months. Uh, the first lease will cost you $9.95 per month. Um, and at the end of those 12 months, those jeans are, of course, yours. But the idea is that we ask our customers to send back the jeans um, so that we can recycle it or make it part of our vintage collection. That is, of course, if they no longer want the jeans. Um, should they want the jeans, they're welcome to keep them as long as they want. So this is the hard copy, um, but we have an interactive version um, and just a digital version on the report section of our PLC side. Um, and what we really wanted to do was uh, take the internal learnings um, and, and put it into something that we could share externally. In the book as well, we try to, uh, yeah, to bring this idea that it's not just about product design, that it's also about thinking about the business models in which you're 
products operate and also like the biggest, the, the big systemic shift um, that, yeah, like the, the system that in which your products and your business models. I or, think we also acknowledge during the product development process that, you know, it is very much about how these products circulate through the different business models. It's about how we design for that intended use and how we want them to be used. But there's also a really big part for us around our supply chain and how we have the kind of opportunity to explain how we're trying to get there, how to bring our suppliers on this journey with us. That was something that we found in the collection was that the earlier we brought them on board this journey, um, they were really kind of open and positive about it as well. And it just made that kind of working relationship much better. And also, Laura, one, one of the main uh, things that caught my attention about Mad Jeans is as well, your type of supply chain. It's, 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 it's much shorter than in, in other cases. So how, how does that work? And, and it, does that have benefits when, for example, shocks like COVID-19 happen? Yeah, absolutely. We have a very short supply chain. Primarily, it's for our main supply chain partners. We start in Recover, where our genes are uh, recycled and turned into fiber, um, blended in with GOTS certified organic cotton, turned into a yarn. Then we move to Tejidos Rojo, where the yarn is dyed and turned into a fabric. And then we move to Ustex International, and they turn that fabric, they cut it, stitch it and wash it into a brand new pair of, of denim jeans. This is very unique for the denim industry because A, it's very short. So uh, three of those supply chain partners are in Spain and the third one, uh, the fourth one, excuse me, is in um, Tunisia. And so we keep everything quite close and that helps us actually have a very low environmental impact as well. Would you say that circular design has kind of transformed the way you see, uh, the, let's say, the future of ACES? And yeah, in which ways? Definitely. I think circularity is all about that change in mindset. Um, and that's definitely something internally we've started to do. We've started to change our mindset around how we develop product, how we see this moving through our circular um, business models, but also how it really resonated with our customers as well. And as a business, we always try to um, put our customers at the center of what we do to make sure that we're designing products and systems that work well for them as well. And we've had a really positive response from our supply chain too. So we're seeing a lot of um, positive around moving towards this way uh, and for us it's all about how we can secure our business and its future as well. And More importantly we also have a very close relationship with them. Uh, you cannot have a circular business without a close relationship with your supply chain partners, strong solidarity and of course during COVID it was only reinforced. Uh, we worked very much close together, made sure to support each other and we were able to continue the business. Um, and that is very much rooted in circularity.